Hey, Mr. C. What are you doing over there? Working on my anti-submarine spotlight. Alrighty then. Well, you have yourself a good day. Extremely bright searchlight from the wing of a Grumman Tracker anti-submarine aircraft. This thing was used to spot submarines on the surface of the water from way up in the sky. Today, we're going to light this thing up. Let's get started. Below this plastic dome is a very powerful carbon arc lamp. You can see the carbon rod loaded into the end here. There's another carbon rod on the other side. This lamp is so bright and so hot and so powerful that it could only be used for a short period of time because it would melt this dome. That's how crazy this lamp is. So think about that. This thing's flying around and air is rushing over this thing and it had a duty cycle just because it's so incredibly hot. You can see up here, this thing is actually upside down right now, right? So this is where it would bolt to the wing. So this is actually like this right now. You can see there's a screen here in the top that would catch basically the extremely hot pieces of carbon coming off of this thing so that wouldn't melt the dome as well. So somewhat of I guess you could say an ash catcher on the bottom side of the dome here. Now this thing is kind of pointed out this way here. This is on a gimbal inside, right? There's motors that control this and there'd be a joystick inside and this thing would move around and you could focus this where you needed to see from way up in the sky, right? Those motors, who knows their condition, they could be seized up. But I do think that we can get light out of this thing today. So in order for me to get started on this, I got to get this dome off of here. And I think I'll probably operate this thing without the plastic dome. You got to remember when this thing is lit up, it's flying around in the air that's passing this thing is cooling this plastic somewhat you know, like a big air-cooled plastic dome right well if it's just sitting here and it's lit up nothing is cooling this thing and I don't want to damage this so what I'll end up doing is probably running it with that big plastic dome off and it'll be a lot clearer as well so in order to get this thing off I got to remove these somewhat of a twist lock type of fastener here you can see they are on a strap so when these things were serviced on the tarmac or wherever they wouldn't lose the screw so they kind of stick in these straps and then the serviceman could get in here reload the carbon rod on this side and then there's a little hatch on the other side that allows the serviceman to reload the carbon rod on the back side and uh, this thing is back in service just that fast. Here's a closer look at the back side here. You see lots of wiring harnesses here. Everything is nicely loomed because this thing is you know on the bottom side of a wing and everything's vibrating right so everything has to be really tight. Switch up here, spring loaded switch even a vacuum tube on this side. Hey, what piece of electronics is complete without a vacuum tube, right? So there's motors and solenoids and capacitors and all sorts of electrical goodness back here. Big connectors, the big pins in that would run off. This is running to the carbon rods and this would obviously go to the control here. This here may have initiated the arc that little solenoid right over there. My main focus today is these leads right here. This runs to the carbon rods. So I need to get current into these leads here to get the light to happen.
The dish cleaned up very nicely and it's very reflective now. It is a little bit pitted, not too big of a deal. That's not going to really affect anything. What is going to affect something though is this whole mechanism is C solid. So I'm going to have to work away at this. This is one of the carbon rods here and the other carbon rod is here and they would have to come and touch together and then back off in order to make the, uh, make the nice bright light that we're looking for. Maybe I can arc start this with a uh, TIG welder or something like that. So anyways, I'll work away at this and get things freed up and hopefully very soon I'll have some light. Welder is set to 80 amps. I have the current running directly into the lamp, so I'm going to use the, the TIG torch switch just to turn this on and off. So I'm going to arc start the thing. As you can see, the actual TIG torch is unhooked and the leads are running directly into the lamp over there. I have my eye protection ready. So what I'll do is I'll move you over here. We'll take a look at the area that it's focused in. So it should be focused in, you know, over there somewhere. The dish is pointing that way. So hopefully it starts and doesn't burn down. All right, here we go. I'll put on my eye protection and hit the switch. Okay, here we go. Wow. That is bright, right through my goggles. It's so bright that it was actually causing the camera to focus hunt. So what it looks like, that electrode is just glowing orange in there. Well, from yellow to orange now. So what it looks like is the beam is extremely focused. So what's happening is it's, it's taking the beam and it's bringing it into this really tight focus. And I imagine because of the dish, that's how they're getting the distance out of that light. And as you can see, that light is incredibly bright. So, wow. So we need to go focus this thing on something distant. See if we can maybe see a beam in the dark or something. It's the middle of the night. Let's see how bright this thing really is. It's focused off into the distance here. Let's see what we get. Here we go. Wow, look at that, how incredibly bright that is. I can very easily understand now why this would work so well from the sky to the ocean. That is incredibly bright. Well, I have to say project successful. If you'd like to see more with this, let me know in the comments below. Are you interested in learning more about electronics, both modern and antique electronic devices alike? I teach electronics in a way that's very easy for you to understand. I have over 200 videos for you to learn from and I have circuits for you to build, complete with my electronic inventions as well. It's all available in my electronics course. It's very affordable and it can even be cheaper than a cup of coffee a month. Why am I doing this? Well, I'm doing this just so I can pass my information on to all of you. I love electronics and I want to share that passion with everybody. If this sounds good to you, definitely check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll pin the link at the top of the comment section. So if you click on that, it'll take you right there. If you enjoyed this video, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be many more videos coming in the very near future all around electronics. It'll be troubleshooting and repairs and restorations and teardowns and all of that great stuff on this channel. So if you're a new subscriber, definitely tap the bell symbol and do all that great stuff that uh, that'll get you notified when I put up a brand new video. All right, until next time, take care. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. Bye for now.